This video is about membrane structure too. Specifically, this is membrane protein three. And we're gonna hear a lot about the membrane proteins which are present in red blood cells. So this is a little drawing of a red blood cell. Um, RBC for red blood cells. So red blood cells have the important role of transporting oxygen. And of course they do this through the protein hemoglobin. But what's interesting about the cells and why uh, this particular membrane protein lecture is so important is that red blood cells will have to do some pretty gymnastic events to transport oxygen from the lungs to the capillaries. So red blood cells need to squeeze through capillaries and they will uh, basically squish down into um, a very small kind of um, rod-like cell and so this means that they have to be very flexible and resilient. So they need some really good reinforcement. If red blood cells break, especially in large numbers, this would decrease the red blood cell count in that individual, and this could lead to anemia, which can be um, a pretty serious uh, disease that impacts the energy levels um, of the individual and other aspects of their function. Um, in particular, as you could imagine, this is going to decrease the amount of oxygen that's um, available to be transported. So an important cellular structure exists to allow the red blood cell um, to have this resilience. Um, so that's the cell cortex. And the cell cortex is a meshwork of fibrous proteins that are attached just inside the cell membrane. So I'm going to do a little zoom in on the membrane to show you what that would look like. So there's our phospholipid bilayer. And the cell cortex is just inside. So with the way that I drew this, this would be the inside. And there would be these fibrous proteins. Which make up the cell cortex. And again, that's just inside uh, the cell. The example in this lecture is all about red blood cells. However, the cell cortex is found in essentially all animal cells. We're just going to use red blood cells as an example. And then its role is to reinforce the cell membrane. Again, this is really um, important for animal cells. In other p cells like plants, they don't have uh, a cell cortex, and that's because they find their enforcement uh, through other structures, uh, which animals don't have. And so take a second and think about if you know some structure feature that plant cells have, which animals don't. So you might have thought about the cell wall, um, and that is correct. So the cell wall is actually outside the cell membrane for plants. It's really thick, strong material. In this drawing, this um, in green would be the cell membrane made up of phospholipids. And then in black, this thicker structure, that's the cell wall. One incredibly important thing to see here is that the cell wall 
is not the same as the cell membrane. The cell membrane, as you know, is made up of phospholipids and proteins and other goodies. Um, and the cell wall for plants um, is made up often of lots of polysaccharides, including cellulose um, and pectin, very long molecules that are very good building materials and, um, and again, are outside uh, the cell membrane. And in this way, they are providing support and protection uh, for the cell membrane. And just to be totally clear, animal cells do not have a cell wall. Okay, so next we're going to talk more about the cell cortex. Um, I want to point out that the cell cortex is going to run around the inside of the entire uh, cell, so just inside uh, the cell membrane. And again, this is made up of a variety of different proteins, which are, we will see in more detail in the next slide. So here we're looking at the cell cortex um, of a red blood cell. And this, uh, just to get you oriented, this here is the inside of the cell, and this is the outside of the cell. And then this little uh, kind of gray line, this is the cell membrane. And so what we're looking at here in all these rainbow colors, those are the proteins that make up uh, the cell cortex and connect the cell cortex uh, to the cell membrane. So the most important one that we're going to talk about today is spectrin. Um, and that's shown in red here. It looks like actin, but it is not actin. Spectrin is a fibrous protein. And it forms a dimer. And you can see that um, in this drawing, there's kind of like two, it looks like a licorice strand. So one of those is one of the proteins and the other one is the second protein. Thus, there's a dimer. And this lines the inside of the cell membrane. Spectrin is often referred to as forming a meshwork. Um, within the red blood cells. And you can kind of see in this drawing how um, there's this interconnected um, web of spectrin. And then there's a bunch of other proteins that are going to attach uh, at miscellaneous points along here. You might be wondering, well, just how important is spectrin? Uh, there are some known mutations in spectrin in humans and in mice, and in this case, I don't think you would be too surprised to hear that this leads to anemia. So basically, mutations in spectrin would thereby make the red blood cells more fragile. They would break more often, and then individuals that didn't have this functional spectrin uh, would be anemic. One other thing that jumps out from this image is the attachment proteins. And those are shown in either yellow or blue. And so attachment proteins are going to do just like what they said. They will attach uh, to other proteins, such as spectrin, integral transmembrane proteins, which here are shown in brown or in green. And so notice that particular integral transmembrane proteins attach to certain attachment proteins. So this green one attaches to yellow, whereas this brown transmembrane protein attaches to the blue um, attachment proteins. And you don't need to memorize those. This is just, at this point, this is just to show you that this is a very regular structure which forms. And this is almost like a kit that certain things can bind to each other, but not to anything else. Finally, the attachment proteins in certain locations can bind to actin, which here is shown in green and just looks kind of weird compared to other drawings of actin, but I'll just point it out here. So here's the actin. And again, showing that there's um, basically another layer um, that this cortex is interior to where the cytoskeleton is. I'll also point out this electron microscopy image um, which is over here. So basically this is a top-down view looking at the spectrin dimers, and then they show these little attachment proteins here, and then they've somehow identified that actin is over here in specific locations as well.
Finally, together, the cell cortex can function to corral certain proteins in a region of the cell membrane. And basically, so the spectrin plus the attachment proteins and the transmembrane proteins all together, those things can hold certain proteins in these locations. I guess this part of the figure shows this the best, uh, that certain proteins that are located here, they might be able to move around a little bit through the cell membrane because it's fluid, uh, but they're going to bump into these things and then they're going to get stuck in this particular area. Uh, so this can basically help to kind of subdivide up the membrane and possibly lead to different functions within that uh, region. Now for an analogy, I want to talk a little bit about a tent um, and how a tent structure is like the cell cortex. So basically, um, here you see a tent. It makes me think about camping. It's not the right time of year, at least for me, to go camping. Uh, but So the tent is made up of nylon, and so it's very uh, flexible, and uh, basically it's, it's a great material uh, to provide a barrier from the elements outside. Uh, but the nylon in itself is gonna, doesn't have any shape, doesn't have any structure. And so the nylon tent needs to be attached to some sort of framework. And so here um, you can see all these poles, and there's lots of different attachment sites here, little hooks that it will, will hook in. And so basically this uh, support network, the frame here of the tent, uh, which is made of flexible rods, that's basically like the cell cortex. Um, now the location is opposite, so you see the frame is on the outside here and the tent itself is on the inside. But anyway, you get the basic idea. And also the fact that there need to be multiple attachment points uh, to really hold the shape uh, of the tent. And if you've ever either forgotten some poles or maybe don't have the instructions uh, for how to put together a tent. You know how tricky that this can be to find a particular um, shape that works and holds together the tent and doesn't like collapse in and of its, in on itself. And so just like that for cells, the cell cortex is really uh, key to hold the shape of the cell and, um, and basically to allow it to function properly. I'd also like to point out that there's a video on the website for the textbook. It is um, movie 11.5, so if you go to Moodle, right below the syllabus, I have a link for the Albert's textbook website. And if you want to see what the red blood cells look like, um, they have this kind of biconcave bi shape, uh, kind of like a donut. Um, it shows them um, through mi a microscope and getting um, manipulated by laser tweezers, which is pretty sweet. Um, and so basically uh, navigate to the chapter 11 and then um, click on the movies and the fifth movie uh, about membrane effects in a red blood cell. It's certainly optional, but I think it can show you a little bit more about the uh, ability of these cells to change shape.